Grounded. 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 What is grounded? Who is grounded? Is Oprah grounded? Are you grounded? Hmm. Please, sir, I just want to see my family again. You are! To the naughty step. Grounded is a game that follows one of four itty bitty little guys. In our case, Maxwell Munchkin on their epic adventure to become Elden Lord of the Yard. It's really to find out why you're small and then become unsmall, but you can't do that without becoming Elden Lord. First, hold your weevils and tighten your shoelaces because things are about to get tiny. Max is awoken to find he is small, very small in fact, with a brain even smaller. Measuring him against the grass blades, we can assume his height to be no more than 5'8". Despite his fresh lineup, we would be getting nowhere without at least a few more inches to our name. And how would we do that, you ask? No idea, but I made this needle axe and that must count for something. After doing a bit of gathering, a bit of socializing, and a bit of, uh, this... I discovered a mysterious machine. That was broken. But it's alright, the machine was fixed. Wow. Until it wasn't. Oh lord. I had found a suspicious door, and inside said door laid Wally, laid Burgle, a tiny robot with a tiny moustache. Burgle revealed to me that there was a way to heal me of my deformity. Scattered around the yard were labs containing chips. Chips which held the instructions for Bone lengthening surgery. This was the solution to my problems. I mean Max's problems. Finally we, I mean he, could reach a height worth putting on the Tinder profile. We just needed those chips, and we'd find the first in none other than the Hedge Lab. <coughs> did I jump scare you? Yeah, I bet I did. You coward. You make me sick. Your weakness is- Now I knew this wouldn't be easy, but I drafted the local fauna into a new weapon, and nothing brings confidence like beating your enemy with your enemy. So with that, I set off to find Burgle's chip. And after a long and perilous journey, I made it to the hedge lab ascent and began my climb. Now I expected a lot of things climbing into this hedge, but I never expected robots that could throw hands. After nearly being beaten to death with batons, I gathered my bearings, flicked this lever, and unlocked the radio. What did this mean for me? I had no idea. I don't know why you'd use a radio when Spotify is free, so I kept it stepping. Nope. After some time, I'd finally made my way to the main lab. And oh boy, was this place confusing. There were a ton of dead ends, a ton of locked doors, and a whole lot of this. Welcome to the Gulag. If you survive, you earn your freedom. Eventually, I found this terrible, terrible corridor infested with upcoming heavyweight champions. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? Your back is broken. What, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. It took 15 minutes of me luring robots into 1v1s and dying before I finally cleared the section. That other corridor was rough, but it seemed like the worst might be behind me and- <laughs> Okay, I could feel a bit of a grind coming along. A great many deaths later, and I felt I knew the stupid spider's stupid movesets, so I went in for one last attempt. A bit of exploring and a bit of tomfoolery later, I came across Silly Burgle's silly little chip. And with that, the hedge lab was complete. But before moving on to the next lab, I spent a couple of hours getting up to some Royal mischief.
By the end of this, I had a couple things going for me. I had tier 2 equipment like the insect bow, hammer and axe. I had a weevil shield, a spider dagger and even a cool little base. I was finally able to sleep soundly at night. Prepare the Nike removal ray. My name is Sandra. Why are you putting on that voice? Your Tinder profile is going to get no matches. Ha ha ha. Isn't he like 12? Ray Kyo, that fool. <sighs> you did come back to me. The origin of this all. I would never afford a new pair of Nike, so I needed this surgery. I needed to get the next chip. The next lab on our lab to-do list is the pond lab. The pond being something I've intentionally avoided until now, for it scares me. Unlike the hedge lab which you could just wander up to and explore until you find the super chip, the pond lab actually required preparation. For if you haven't noticed, Max is not very, um, aquatic. I needed to take a few dips beforehand, collecting resources like lily pad wax in order to make gill tubes and fins which would let me explore more easily. But pouring stuff out of the way, I could get to the main event. Spending like an hour looking for the entrance to this place. The game really doesn't tell you where to go, and going deep is scary when you have to resurface every 80 seconds, so I spent most of my time just trying not to drown. But eventually, I found it, and after spending a few minutes twisting some nozzles, I died. Of dehydration. In a pond. Poor form. I'd sort of just ignored the fact you can make canteens, and I've just been living from water source to water source like some wild animal. But it's alright, I eventually found a water dispenser. Being guarded by some wizards. Mm. A death or two later and I cast straight hands, sending Merlin right back to his fairy tale. I found my super chip laying in the room over and that was that. I bloomed Dr. Tully's weird Brussel basement for good luck and I got out of there. I truly hoped to never swim in this pond again. Behold, a tower. What was the purpose of this tower, you ask? Officially, to have a point from which I could zip line to the rest of the map. Unofficially, to feel the cool evening breeze I once took for granted. Now it is my plan to have a zip line in the direction of the tree, one toward the hedge, and another toward the bench. But all of that was scrapped when I realized this. I totally thought they just powered you along like other games do, and I was wrong. The grief was strong, but I handled it well by turning my tower into an aphid shrine and filling my base with stuffed ants. It's better than we thought, those nikes had 6 inch padded insoles. What a short loser. We could sell these cookies $300. Jill if you sell those I am going to go full third reich on your kringa self. My name is still Sandra. The Haze Lab, ooh hoo hoo. For some reason, I felt that this one would be extra enjoyable. Poison environments in most games definitely indicate that there will be a spike in happy gamer time, and definitely will not result in fits of rage. So with my gamer senses at an all time high, I donned my gladiator helm and started running. Now this lab was not very big, so I felt I wouldn't run into too much trouble clear. Wasn't too bad. <laughs> Moving on, the final lab we had to liberate was the Black Ant Lab, which was vaguely over here. Now, finding the Black Ant Nest seems simple. Just look for the Black Ants and you'll be there. 
And it was that simple. I just have an eggshell full cranium and a yolk full brain. At some points I was literally just one turn away from finding the nest, but that would be too easy. And instead, I... Now this lab was very similar to the others, just bigger and more confusing. I made my way in and out into the sand pit, which was a horrible place that I did not stay long in. My inventory was full and I kept getting lost, so I ended up making a couple trips back before finally clearing the place. Now I managed to forget to record the first half of me exploring the lab, but for the most part it was just me exploding things with bombs I made and beating robots to death. After several beatings and several wrong turns, I reached the end of the lab, I reached the boss room. Now this boss initiates when you press this button which seals this door keeping out the load of warrior ants that are in the room over. My name is Walter Hartwell. Let the pain begin. Wow, that boss was really tough. I wonder what made it so difficult to defeat compared to everything else I've fought so far. The next few hours were a little more down to earth. The main things I got up to during this time involved building the final part of the base, exploring areas of the labs that I couldn't get into before without the manager's keycard, and killing antlines. I killed a lot of antlines. For the armor that meant I could climb up these coals into the upper yard without dying. I also found the zipline upgrade that meant my tower now had a purpose again. Yippee! And it was finally time to explore the upper yard. Bugs! Big bugs, small bugs, weak bugs, strong bugs, long bugs, lady, birds. Bugs. I had to kill many, many bugs before I could continue on our adventure. See, I need to crack open the scabby chilling on this table of the upper yard to progress, but that requires a tier 3 busting tool. And to get the materials for that, I'd first need a tier 3 chopping tool. And for both tools, I'd need lots of rare bug parts. But simply killing upper yard bugs isn't that easy, so I'd need a couple tier 3 weapons first in order to kill the bugs, which would mean killing even more bugs. But let's take a closer look. Based off this challenge, the first thing I do be A, kill weaker upper yard bugs like the fire ants and tiger mosquitoes in order to make some tier 3 weapons. B, focus on making a tier 3 axe because all I need are termite parts. Or C, kill an ox beetle with weapons it's resistant to for parts I can't use for anything yet because no balls. Okay, back to the other plans. I've been using the regular mosquito rapier most of this playthrough, so the first weapon I wanted was the tiger mosquito rapier. These were not very difficult, so I didn't spend much time. Ooh. Hmm. Now I had gone and killed a few termites in order to make the axe for gathering pupa leather, but the footage corrupted. So here's my um. Reconstruction. I had what I needed for the fire ant club and the rapier, except for rust, which you need a tier 3 busting tool for. The gathering and the base building and the adventuring was done. We'd come far from fearing spiderlings and robots and exploring ant nests. The final chapter of our journey was upon us. I broke the case of Wendell Scabby and ventured into the Undershed. This place was dark, it was dank, and it had no business being this crowded. I snuck my way through and met a clearing 
where I sneakily slipped past and avoided the main mosquitoes. This place looked worse than it really was. I had killed a hundred spies until now. What's one more? Condolences, you are now twice the widow you were before. I continued to the lab, it was clear something terrible had happened to this place. Something ominous was waiting for me. I could feel it. Something tall. Measuring it up against the physical manifestation of my fear, we can assume its height to be no more than 5'10. One thing stood before me in my bone lengthening surgery. One thing. If that happened to be a terrible diaper wearing monster, then so be it. I would not be gatekept from Tinder matches by a dude with no matches himself. It was the penultimate showdown. David versus the slightly larger David. Only one of us is walking away and it's not gonna be you, you stupid bald bit. Half man, half ant, entirely six feet under. I'd done it. The undershed was cleared. I had all the ingredients for the machine that could lengthen my bones. I was this close to our goal. Now earlier I described our showdown with the ant as penultimate, meaning second to last. And that's because I had one battle left. Not with a giant mant monster or a deadly black widow, but with the yard itself. If I wanted to finish this, I had to give it my all one last time. I took a final look back at the friends who had been with me through all of this. Nothing would stop me now. <clears throat> Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to like and subscribe. It will not take me an eternity to make the next video, I promise. I realize there are quite a few things I didn't get around to doing in Grounded, like getting all the blueprint chips, or fighting all the bosses, or getting the good ending. I, I, I got the bad one. Which is why if this video does well enough, I will come back to 100% the game. I am sure I will not come to regret sinking even more hours into this stupid game. So anyways, uh, what is, um, what is Grounded then? Hmm. Oh. Chris. Chris is grounded.